What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to this super rad, rad formational video where we are going to go through the entire process of stacking a rotary engine. Our test example we're using today is a 13B REW. There are some little nuances and differences between the series, but this ought to teach you all the tips and tricks that I do to stack these engines up. Now, a little caveat, there's a lot of different ways that people build engines. There's a lot of different methods to the madness. My way is my way. Somebody else might do it their way. You're gonna get the same result. There's a lot of different ways to do this, okay? So, first things first. If you haven't gotten all your parts cleaned, painted whatever fancy color you want, new bearings, gotten all your seals clearanced, all that stuff, go check out those other videos on the channel. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button if you wanna keep learning more stuff about these rotaries and other cars. Once you have all your stuff cleaned, you're ready to start stacking your engine. So we've got everything laid out, everything is cleaned, all the surfaces are cleaned, I've wiped all the oil off that I put on these to store them so they don't rust. We got our stationary gears with new bearings, the rotors are built, if you saw that video. We've got our front cover on the engine stand, and we have the rest of our parts laid out over here, ready to be put together. So, I would highly suggest, I had somebody ask in the previous video, does temperature matter when you're putting your side seals in? And that one of me reminded me to make this point in this video. Coolant seals, your rubber gaskets, stuff like this, okay, all of that stuff, when they are cold, can become brittle and they shrink up. So if you're gonna stack your engine in a very cold garage, like my little shop here, don't have ins an insulated roof, got my little fire going, you need to make sure that you're storing your soft seals somewhere where they aren't going to be cold. So when you go to put your engine together, they're nice and warm, all right? Just trust me, makes a huge difference. That's one part where like I've struggled with a few engine builds in the past, do that. So anyways, we've got the front iron on the engine stand, but you're gonna notice, well, what the heck, we can't stack the engine, it's upside down. So before you even start stacking your engine, you need to put the front stationary gear in the front iron, all right? Sometimes, this thing doesn't exactly just slide down in there. They can fit a little snug. And uh, once you get that lined up, there is a little dowel right here. It's gonna line this up. You can just take a nice rubber mallet, tap this baby in. So, there she went, all the way down. All right, once you have the front stationary gear, you're gonna grab one of the longer 12 millimeter head bolts, and you're gonna put that in here. Now, this bolt, you don't need to tighten it with your impact or whatever, just hand tight, just like that. What that's gonna do is prevent the stationary gear from falling out while we flip over the front iron. Boom. Okay, now that we have the front iron flipped over, there's a few different things that you can do next. I prefer to put the rotor on the iron next, okay? And this is your last chance to clean any of this stuff, right? You gotta make sure this stuff is clean. Okay, I prefer, like I said, I'm gonna put the rotor on here first. Then we're gonna put the sealant in the coolant grooves. I use this Permatex high tech. We went over that in a previous video. We're gonna put the coolant seals in and we'll sit the housing on there. When you're doing that, you also can't forget that there is an O-ring that goes in the housing for the dowels. Do not forget this O-ring. You will have an oil leak or low oil pressure and you will have to take your entire engine back apart. So don't forget those. So I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna start putting the rotor and prepping the rotor to go on here. So I have this handy dandy little printer stand here. We're gonna grab our front rotor. Okay. I'm gonna put this thing on our stand. Like I said, this is the last time that you get to see all of this stuff, so make sure that it's all in order. A little tip for you guys. Take either the new apex seals you're gonna use or an old apex seal that fits in your rotor, and you wanna make sure that all of your corner seals and corner seal springs are perfectly straight. 
So go around, make sure that they're all straight. Make sure that the apex seal can slide perfectly down into that groove. Okay, we're gonna flip this over, and do the other side. Reason we're doing this is because when we set this rotor in there and the housing's in there and you go to drop in your apex seals, they won't be straight. And you'll have to figure out a way to get them straight and it's always a pain in the butt if the engine's already in. So like right here, it's hard for you guys to see because you really can't, but I have a corner seal that's not lined up or the corner seal spring. And uh, I'd have been very mad if this would have happened with the, uh, okay. Once this is down in the housing, cause it's really hard to straighten that without pulling the whole rotor back out. So now we're straight. Let me try to get you a better view of it. So here you can see, we're basically just gonna take this apex seal, push down and into the groove like this and pull it out. And what that's gonna allow us to do is when we go to drop the new apex seal in like this, all the way down, it'll slide nicely down in there. It won't contact anything. Okay, once we have that bit done, Aim you guys up, how's that shot? My camera's kind of zoomed out, so it's, it's like a wide angle. Okay, there we go. Remember guys, your last chance to make sure everything is clean, take advantage of it. Okay, we've got that cleaned. Now, your rotor has a front and a back. If you watch the rotor assembly video, you know that. The stationary gear has to line up with the stationary gear. Now, you're also going to ask, how do you time a rotary engine? How do you know, or how do you set up the points of the rotor so they're opposite, right? On a two rotor, the front rotor is going to point up and the rear rotor is going to point down. It's simple as that. They're 180 degrees out. So when you put this in here, we're going to grab the stationary gear without touching the seals to the um, iron yet so the corner seals don't spin. We're gonna gently set this down onto the iron, okay? So now this is in place. If you start twisting this, some of these corner seals might move, all right? And right now is a nice chance to check them again. But right before you put the housing on, check those again. So the next step is we're gonna put our high tack in these grooves and get our coolant seals laid in here and then we got to put some RTV on these parts out here. So this spot here needs some RTV and this spot here needs some RTV. And this stuff out here is mainly just because um, that's where your oil pan galley or the, the main abyss of the oil pan is. You don't want oil to splash up out of there. It's not like a high pressure area, but just to seal it up, this little triangle. So. We're going to come up here to the workbench. Always got stuff in the way, a little rotor stand. Get these still sitting here and we're gonna find. So the next thing you gotta do is you need to get in here and you need to figure out which O-ring is your dowel pin O-ring, okay? We'll grab a housing, set it up here. Grab us a dowel pin. When you weigh all these out, there's gonna be two sets of four. You wanna make sure that you have the proper ones, okay? They should fit in here nice and snug. And I think that one is the big one. These are the right ones, yes. Okay, so you're gonna see that there is a thicker, more beady, and a thinner one that's largely the same diameter. It's the thinner one of those two. Now, you might get lucky just like this, and it might just stay in there, okay? What I like to do is go ahead and put some Hylomar in here. And here is something that you need to make sure that you get right, or at least like if you mess it up, it's not a big deal, but um, it just is an annoyance. So when you're gonna put your housing on, you need to remember which side is going down, okay? Since you're building this engine up like a cheeseburger, you could put this O-ring in and go over there and be like, oh, I did it backwards, okay? So if we take this, 
We come over here to our engine. We know that the exhaust port is going to line up with the intake port. So this is how the housing is going to go on. Okay. So that means my first dowel pin O-ring needs to be on this side. So I put my finger on it. Come back over to the workbench. Notice, same finger. We'll go ahead and we'll just lay this down, right, on the bench here, running out of room. So we know this is the right one, okay? So, a little hack for doing this. If you've ever used this high tack stuff before, we don't want to use the brush, that makes too big of a mess. Literally the worst idea you could ever have. Just be very careful, just set that off to the side. We have a little syringe, just like this. Get them at CVS, a little syringe, nothing fancy. We're gonna pull some high tack up into the syringe. I'm gonna put a little bit of high tack in here. You really won't have to like, for this O-ring, you don't need to put a ton of, ton of this stuff in this hole. Just enough to hold it in. We're gonna take our O-ring now. I'm gonna place it down in here. And one thing that I like to do to not get my hands super dirty is just come over here. I think my 17 millimeter socket is the proper size, if I recall correctly. And you can literally rest the 17 mil socket on top of that to push that down in there. And I like to just leave this sitting here to hold those in. If it's cold or weird or whatever, and they don't want to fit right, sometimes you can get weird sized ones. Just leave that there, it'll hold it in. The high tackle set up, it'll hold it. Now, let's get the iron prepped. So this is where you have to use a lot more of your high tack and syringe, but don't overdo it. This is where you don't wanna make a mess. Okay guys, don't wanna make a mess. Messes are no bueno. So I'm gonna grab us a load of high tack. A little stringies off here. And pretty much, you're gonna set this guy in this groove, and you're just gonna gradually push down and deposit your high tack down in there. Just work your way around. The inner coolant groove is a little bit wider than the outer, which helps out a ton for putting this in there. And on the old school engines, uh, 12As, 13Bs, these coolant grooves are actually in the housing. So you have to really make sure that the, the seals are set in there really well uh, when you go to drop the housing in. Same with in this engine, since they're in the irons, when we go to put our center iron on, you will need to just be careful that uh, they don't fall out. Bing, bang, boom. Okay. Now, I would say that there is a little bit of a time limit on this stuff. I wouldn't put it on and, you know, go take a leak for 20 minutes and come back. It's probably going to be a little dry. Always blow out the syringe. It just helps keep that thing working for the whole time. And then you just throw this away at the end. Okay. Coolant seal grooves effectively covered. Now, before I forget, we're going to go ahead and put the well, actually, let's do our, we're going to put the coolant seals in the engine now. So, it's very important for this bit. Right here on your coolant seal groove, there is a part in the groove where they have put this together. Okay, imagine a chain, that's your link that puts them together. This part needs to not be, okay, in the exhaust or compression side of the engine. So, when you're looking at the engine... When you're looking at the engine from the top, you're gonna to take this green area of the seal right here, and you wanna put it up here by the intake port, okay? What that does is it lowers the chance of this coolant seal breaking due to just the heat in the engine. Green spot. Just gonna lay this guy down in here. Put that thing right above the intake port. And like I said, don't try to make a mess. These seals, if you have OEM Mazda seals, should fit really nicely. And if it's cold, you might struggle a little bit to get them in there, but generally speaking, these things will fit super nice. 
if you have different brand of seals, sometimes when you push it all the way in around, it'll pop out on a different side. So it might take more sets of hands, but if you need to, you can use like some sockets or something and set them on the seal. It doesn't take much to hold it down. You just need to hold that in that groove and we're good. So now that, that one's in, we'll grab the black one. Now these have a white like trim on them. See the white and the black. I always try to put the black side up and down. These will get out of the out of hand and they'll try to spin on you. So just be careful putting these in. Make sure you don't have them like looped over on themselves or whatever. Because they will like to they like to flip over in the groove and it's like putting a belt on and getting it spun the wrong way around the back belt loops. But once you get these started, most of the way around, it gets a lot easier to keep them oriented the right way. Like I said, this high tack can be a little messy, but if you know how to work with it, it's really not that bad. And it's, in my mind, just a little bit more of a safety, you know, when you're putting these together, than uh, using just Vaseline or Hylomar or whatever. Bada bing, bada boom. Come in from this side and work this corner. This outer seal can stretch a little bit. And uh, as you can see, mine is popping back out around this side. Come on now, stay in there. So once this high, or, uh, high tack gets a little stickier, they tend to stay in there. But you're going to see, you're going to make a mess of your fingers, guys. All right. So that's staying in there. The inner one is still in there. Let me clean my hands off. What is y'all's hack for keeping an RTV can alive? Put like a wood screw in it or something. So just this area, you don't have to be too generous with it. Lather it on. Very nice. Okay. Just lost the lid. RTV can, wasted. All right, all right, so this is the time, the last time that you get to check your corner seal to apex seal alignment here for the bottom. It's real hard to make these work. I tend to just push in from the side just like this. It's, it's hard, a little bit harder for you to see. So I tend to just push in from the side right here and that ensures that that corner seal is straight. It's really easy to straighten the top one, but not the bottom ones. Once we set this housing on here, this should go in Super easy and not hit anything, no hangups. And check this other corner as well. And as a matter of fact, that movement has enlightened me to something else that I should have done but didn't do yet, is you can take the E-shaft and go ahead and stick the E-shaft in here during this part. But before you put your E-shaft in and forget, okay, first things first, this E-shaft can get installed backwards. Ask me how I know. I built an engine with the E-shaft in backwards, had to take the whole thing back apart. It was really annoying. I think that video is on the channel somewhere a couple years ago. It's like a 12A or something. Uh, make sure you lubricate your bearings. This is just some white assembly lube. Before you put this thing in here. So I guess the proper way, the last thing you should do before you put your housing on is get the E-shaft in there. And what this will do is this will center the rotor perfectly and not let it move. So now what we're going to do again, find my apex seal. She's right by the camera. We're just going to go ahead and check all of these one last time because, like I said, it's the last time you get to check them and you don't want these to be off. It just takes a tiny bit to be off and then you got to, your apex seal won't slide all the way in. Okay, so that's good. The coolant seals, check them one last time. If you're going to notice that this one flipped over, so we need to fix that. Push this guy back in. This front section here. Come on, buddy. Stay in there. All right, so that one's back in there. And the inner one is in there. Our green dots lined up. The dial pin O-ring area is clear. So we're ready to put the housing on. So we're gonna grab our socket off of there. 
make sure that that o-ring is seated all the way down and we're going to take this housing and place it on the engine just like that okay now you're gonna be like oh my gosh she didn't put the dowels in yet i don't like to put the dowels in until i get the housing kind of sit it on sat on there grab our two dowels push it in make sure it's locked this one push it in make sure it's locked boom now we're good the housing's on now this comes the fun part make sure your e shafts in the right way okay so for those of you who've never done this before your apex seals depending on what brand type apex seal you're running there's different setups for these okay don't want to lose any of these springs and these can be a real pain in the butt to get in Okay, so for this engine, we have Rotary Aviation Super Seals, or Race Seals, or whatever. They're RA Seals. These are two-piece, which means there's these little baby triangles right here. And then there's the large and in-charge big boy Apex Seal. Okay, now, there's also Apex Seal Springs, okay? So you have an inner spring, which is the short one, and an outer spring, which is the long one. You're going to take these springs, and they're going to fit just like this. So you have one inside the other one. Now, on the rotor, or on the rotor, on the apex seal, you're going to see that there are little grooves here and here. Those springs are going to fit. Oh, I'll show you. So the springs are going to fit inside the grooves just like that. Okay. Once you have them assembled like that, you will take the corner piece just like this. This piece fits in under the spring. Okay. And you'll push this in all the way flat like that once the engine goes together. So that's how that looks outside of the engine. Now we're going to go put this together in the engine and it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt but it's really not that hard so i'll do my best to show you guys that process all right so we're going to grab like i said you don't want to lose any of this stuff and you really don't want to lose it in your engine that makes it a real pain in the butt so we're going to take our apex seal and spring and hold it like this okay the main one once you have it held like that you're going to take the small one and you're going to sit it under that big spring this is going to be kind of a pain in the butt for you to hold these. But once you do it enough times, you get a little practice. You're pretty good at it. You got to make sure they're lined up in their grooves. Golly. I'm glad I'm only doing this. I'm going to show you guys this in detail once because this is kind of hard for me to do. I've done this a bunch of times. Okay. So once you get it held like this, notice everything's in there. Oh, it just popped back out. So we're going to take these. Once you get them lined up and you're going to get it started in there. Okay, you're going to start to push this down. Make sure you're sp you don't want to push on the apex seal here. You want to push down on the springs so that you know that they are still in their rightful groove and they haven't popped out of that groove, okay? Make sure that inner spring stays lined up. Once you start getting pressure on this, you're going to see that the inner spring will stay, all right? Bring you closer for a second, and I'll film this again on the other sides. But you'll see that the springs are going to stay in there now. Okay? And you don't want to push down on the apex seal because the springs will stay up. You want to push down on the spring. If you have a little bit of a fingernail, this is nice. Use a flathead screwdriver if you need it. These can be pretty tight. So you're going to push this down in there all the way. I'm going to use this old apex seal to push on the spring. Push on the spring, guys. Not on the apex seal. And it should go all the way down. I'm going to grab a screwdriver just to make sure it is. Okay. So, if you've pushed this in, okay, and it stops and the tip of it is sticking up, 
that means your corner seal is out of alignment and you're hitting the corner seal and it won't let the apex seal go down. So that's why I'm telling you it's super important to make sure that all that stuff is straight because if you have to lift this housing back off with those coolant seals on it and all that high tack is going to make a mess. So make sure you get it right. Don't put the little corners in until you have all the rest of these in and you're ready to put the center iron on, okay? Because you don't want to lose one of those corners. Once you push them down in there, the spring pressure can make them pop out and you can lose them in the coolant jacket. I've taken engines apart that have had extra corners in them, so just be careful. <sighs> Four more. Sweet deal. All right, guys. So now that we have the apex seals in, the rotors in, the E-shafts in, the irons are in, the bearings are lubed, we've siliconed these, we need to put the second dowel O-ring on, and then we need to silicone this, and then we need to prep the center iron to go on the engine. Before we place the center iron on the engine, we need to put these little corners in, but I like to do all that stuff first, put this in, then go to put the center iron on. Putting the center iron on is a real pain. You have to hold the E-shaft up, like it needs to slide up so that you can walk the center iron down and around so that it's on this. Um, and it's going to get, it's real tricky with one guy. You're going to see me using my knee under the engine and holding this and doing, it's like, see how I can move the E-shaft and still move my hands. Uh, that's how I like to do it. It's nice that this engine stand is short for that reason, but it sucks because I have to like literally sit on the ground to build this engine. So, um, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, buddy. Fitting nice and tight. Nice keeping everything warm outside, even though it's winter. Winter in Tennessee, we're getting all the snow. So, this iron, when you go to put it on, you need to make sure that these stay seated, okay? Because you're going to flip this upside down, work it down the E shaft, and then put it on, okay? And if, you, if one of these twists, one of them pops out right before you push it down, you got to undo all the E-shaft goodies that you just did, and then you have to fix it, and then you have to redo all the E-shaft goodies you just did. So make sure that these seals don't pop out. This is where this high tax is really nice because it'll set up, and it'll kind of, you know, harden a little bit, act like glue, and ho really hold these in here for you so they don't just come flying out of there. It's always unfortunate when things pop out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take... The corner seal pieces, the two-piece apex seal, and we're going to put these in. So notice the orientation. You want to make sure that you get this thing below the spring, okay? If you put it behind the spring, it won't work. You have to be in front of the spring, just like this. And this piece is going to just pop down in there. Just like that. And you should be able to see it. See it springing back? Now, at this point, what you should do is put a bunch of grease over top of that so that it doesn't uh, fly out on you. So, once you've got the piece in there, I like to just go like this. Put some extra grease on that. Reason being, now when that corner pops up, it doesn't go flying. All right. The ultimate fun part. Check everything. Check everything on your rotor. Make sure that you know everything's done before you put this in here, okay? Coolant seals are set up. They're not twisting. The corners are all in. We got grease on them so we can see if they pop up. We got our silicone here. Our dowels are in and seated. The housing isn't moving anywhere. The E-shaft is in, in the correct direction. The dowel O-ring is on. So we're ready for the center iron. I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be a circus. Just watch this, it's really funny. Cause this is a real pain in the butt to do by yourself. Remember, make sure you put the coolant seals on the right side. If you didn't, it becomes a pain in the butt. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. 
Okay. Notice, I left this sitting on the dowels and I didn't push it all the way down. What you need to do now is go through and check all the things I just told you to check again. You wanna make sure none of your coolant seals have turned. You can look up in here and see all of them. You wanna make sure that none of your little corner pieces have popped up. Real hard for me to show you, but you wanna check right here. You can see that corner seal popped up right there. So we wanna reach in here push that back down. If you need to take a screwdriver and do it, it's probably the easiest way. Man, let me tell you, you know what's really hard? Doing this and filming. There we go. All right, that one's in. It's in right here. Oh, I pushed it up. Okay, I gotta put the camera down. <laughs> you just gotta watch from there. All right. So once all your corners are down, you know that your coolant seals haven't flipped, you know everything's good. What you get to do now is take this, rotate it over so it fits on the dowels. run that baby home. Push that baby down in there. Nice and tight. Make sure it's all the way seated. And these old control rings weren't fitting super tight, so this is kind of sitting up a little higher than normal. All right. Dope. Good deal. The next rotor, the next set of these, the next dowel pin o-ring, and uh, yeah, we're ready to put the next set up on. So let's, uh, let's do that. Basically the exact same process. Once you get the E-shaft in, the rotors will only fit one way, okay? It'll only go on the right direction. So we're gonna take our, we're gonna take the rear rotor, rear, the gear side goes towards you because there's no gear in the center iron. Make sure all your seals are in there right. And uh, drop this baby on here. We gotta lubricate that bearing first. Dope. Perfect. Now, remember what I said, guys. The front rotor points up, the back one points down. Boom. Now, we're going to check all our corners at the bottom and then do the rest, of the rest of the deal. Now that we're at the halfway point, guys, the fire's getting a little low. It's getting a little cold in here. Ah. All right, guys, remember, green side by the intake port. Looking prime, looking prime. All right, guys, I think we're just about ready to drop this housing on here. Let me check my apex seal corners once more. You wonder why I do all these little checks, right? These little, like, check this, check that, make sure of this, make sure of that. Well, that's because if you don't, the one time that you don't, I'm gonna have one of these corners that's not gonna be straight, and then I'm gonna spend an hour trying to get one apex seal in and trying to twist it with a thin screwdriver or doing something, so it's just eliminating all of these areas that can, that can make you take longer, right? All this stuff's in, 
coolant, coolant seals aren't twisted. We've got our uh, dowel pin O-ring is in the housing. And, okay, good, I did the right side. I was going to say, y'all are going to laugh at me. I did the wrong one, but ready to set this baby on here. Nailed it. But boom. Time for them dowels. Pops right down in there. Pops right down in there. Success. Okay. Now we get to do these little corners and prep the rear iron for installation. All right, guys, remember, green side, intake port. No shot. Come on. Made it all the way to the last one. Oh, come on, go in there. No way. Come on, you know you want to go down. You know you want to go down. Go down, please. Dang it. <laughs> we made it to the last apex seal before I got one that didn't go. All right. This becomes a little troublesome, but this is good for you guys because I have to explain how to fix this now. Okay. So when you go to pull this back out, okay, you want to pull up on the apex seal, not the spring. Um, grab the apex seal the springs come out with it so i have a pliers over here that's not like serrated or anything it's just a a small like a little hobby sewing pliers or whatever right there's no serrations on it. it's just smooth so we're not going to tear it up so i'll put you guys down we're going to grab the apex seal and pull this thing back out sometimes if you go like right away and just check it again like wiggle it as it goes. Oh, look at that. If you wiggle it as it goes, it'll just go. Dang it, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, notice here, like I'm wiggling the seal up and down, trying to, trying to get that corner seal to twist. Uh, most likely it's actually the corner seal spring that's preventing us from going down. So, I guess we'll pull this back out. And give this a go with the little tool. Okay, so apex seal and spring are out. Just yard sailed everything. So I have this little tool. Okay, it's like a uh, I don't know, just a piece of steel or something. It's got a point ground on the end of it like that, and you can take this and stick it down in here. It's a little bit thinner than an apex seal, and you can kind of walk it back and forth along the edges of the rotor, right? So if here's the edge of the apex seal groove, I'm just simply going like this along that groove. And what that's trying to do is push whatever part of that seal isn't fitting correctly back into its spot. So I'll try this again after a little bit of coaxing from that. Let's see if this thing goes all the way in. Dang it, I was hoping to have a 100% success rate putting these in, and we got messed up on the last one. See, because like at this point, we're not taking this uh, rotor back out of here, and we're not taking the housing off, so it's uh, it's sitting where it's sitting, right? Come on, come on. Would we go down a little bit? Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Okay. So, I was wiggling on this, twisting on the E-shaft just a little bit, so pushing downward pressure, a little bit of shake back and forth, and you rotate the, the rotor just a little bit, and that allows that to kind of, just shakes and jives everything, and then it, it spins back into place. So, man. That was way easier than it probably could have been. All right, next bit, the corners. I already built the rear iron. We're ready to put the rear iron on and torque this baby down. Last check before the rear iron goes on. Dowel pin O-ring is in. All the corner pieces for your apex seals are in. Both dowels are in. We come over here, we look at our rear iron. We see that none of the seals have flipped. We've got to put our silicone on. Look at that, we forgot something. So let me put the silicone on and we'll put this thing together. All right, silicone is on. Looks like we're ready for the rear iron. Okay. Now you might just be like, what the heck? He's not gonna park it halfway and go. Nope, this one, I just send it home. You don't really look at the, I don't look at the, Corners, I know they're in there. We didn't shake the engine, so I know it's good. Boom. Now, we need to take our rear stationary gear and put this thing in. Make sure you lube the bearing. All nice. These are brand new. Good to go. There's also a dowel in the rear. This thing should just slide right down in there. Boom. Cocked and locked. Okay, now we're going to get our tension bolts. Get all these in here. I've already installed all the new washers on all of these. Start dropping these in. And we'll start going through a little torque pattern. Okay, the one with the Mazda M goes right here. It's longer than all the rest. So now you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket. And what I tend to do is follow the torque pattern and just go like a half a turn past snug and keep going down. I have a little like twirly do deal. I'll show it to you here, I'll slide. I gotta put the camera on the charger. She's getting a little dead. We've been at it for an hour and 20 minutes. Bring this a little closer. This is a 17 millimeter is what you need. And I just have one of these little twisty goo deals. And uh, I've got the torque pattern on the wall over there. So I'm gonna consult the wall, but you can consult the torque pattern for your engine. So just like to, little to snug, little bit to snug. A little bit to snug. You just want to work this down evenly so that you don't make anything mad as it goes together. Okay, once you get them all snugged up, we're gonna get it, grab a torque wrench. Um, the, the final torque spec for these bolts is 28 foot-pounds. I go to 30 foot-pounds and I do it in increments of 10. So I go all the way around in the torque order to 10 foot pounds, and then I'll go, once I know all of them are at 10 and you can go around the perimeter and get 10, then I'll go to 20 and do the same thing, and then I go to 30 and do the same thing. That just effectively makes sure that you've walked everything together, you know, in unison. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yep. See, like, just how much easier that is. But, yeah, yeah, that one's like ready to rip, 100 psi or 90 psi. But, like, it just has that like initial little hang up, and then it goes. But what I think that's from those oil control rings were like wanting to push out, and they're Atkins ones, so they fit real tight. 
So I think that's what's like hanging it up. Just the oil control rings are putting a lot of pressure. All right, my guys. They're all torqued, ready to rip. How I tend to do that process, it's really hard to show because it takes forever, so probably just like zoomed through it real quick. But uh, I like to do the normal torque pattern, which I have over here on the wall. So one, two, three, four, you do your torque pattern all the way around. Like I said, 10 foot-pounds, 20 foot-pounds, 30 foot-pounds. After each level, you want to make sure that you can go all the way around in a circle and all of them are at that torque, then start to the next torque. Um, if you start like go to 10 you might like the first two you tighten might be a little bit looser by the time you get to the end so just be careful of that we've got it all put together we got our front hub bolt on it it makes good whooshy noises so this engine feels just a little bit tighter than normal and i don't exactly know 100 percent i actually kind of have a theory so this engine this engine feels, what the heck's going on with my lights? Come on, lights, fix yourself. All right, so. We move locations after that because my lights are freaking out. So, we've got good whooshy noises on this beast, but this engine does feel a little bit tighter than normal and my guess is because whenever we were looking at those if you remember from assembling the rotors when we were putting the oil control rings in and they were struggling to fit is that those oil control rings are putting a good amount of pressure on the housings which is making it a little bit harder to turn and I say harder to turn okay like you're not gonna really know without being having been around rotary engines like how hard it is to turn one of these over but like you can feel see the effort I'm putting in on this one not that much and then this one is just requiring you know which I don't have my pin in there so it's, just spin. it's just a little bit tougher so we'll compression test it make sure everything's good ideally you know nothing has to come back apart but uh, my guess is just those old control rings weren't wanting to seat like they weren't seeding all the way down. They were kind of creeping out just a little bit. Um, so that's probably what's pushing a little bit against it. But otherwise, I'm happy with it. And uh, we're done. So that's stacking a rotary engine. I appreciate all of you guys who stuck around to the very end. I hope you guys learned something doing this. Um, I just wanted to kind of put my way to do it out there and show you guys what's up. There are a lot of things that still need to be done to this engine before it goes in the car. So stay tuned on the channel for those. We have a few more projects to tidy up, and then that video will probably come out really soon. So, what we have left, generally, oil pan, pickup, oil pump, front stack, and uh, our oil filter housing. I do need to take the rear stationary gear back out just to put a new seal in it and to put a new O-ring around the outside, um, but for now, it's in there. Typically, you can pull the rear stack gear out and put it back in as long as you don't spin the engine over. Um, fairly easily especially on the stand like this so with that being said guys thank you guys very much for watching comment below with any questions you guys have do my best to answer them and especially if you have questions about the next steps of this build so we're going to put the oil pan on the front cover on setting in play um drop a question or in the comments below about any of that stuff and i'll make sure to address it for you so thank you guys very much for watching we'll see you in the next one keep it rad Come here, laddie, come here, come here, come on, come on, you gotta say bye, laddie, hey, come on, come here, come here, no, no, come on, come here, you're tired, you've been outside all day, and she's real excited today, guys, what's up, what's up, huh, what's up, we got an engine built. You did nothing to help that process. You were outside chasing squirrels all day. Peace, guys.